So here we are again early on a Thursday morning, and I'm giving you a, a review for a movie that has made some claims that it just can't substantiate. Okay. Director of tonight's movie is Ramin Niami. And good old Ramin claims that this movie is a twist on Rear Window. Now, most of you who follow me are movie lovers. I don't need to explain Rear Window. Hitchcock, classic. But let's see if this one fits the mold. In Rear Window, you have a main character who is confined to a wheelchair due to an accident. All right. uh, you don't really have that in this movie. Hmm. You have a man who witnesses a murder. Nah, you don't really have that in this movie either. You have a good guy who is seeking justice. Nah, you don't really have that in this movie either. You don't have Jimmy Stewart, you don't have Raymond Burr, and you don't have Grace Kelly. What the hell do you have? And how do you make the connection for Rear Window? Cinematic Glass is about to begin. Your professor is in. Greetings, salutations, and other sundry affair. I am your cinematic professor and a purveyor of truth in movies. And tonight's lesson plan is a film called I Without a Face. The title is actually kind of clever. I like the way it fits in. You know, the whole thing about uh, the, the, the rear window comparison is that you have a man who is confined to his wheelchair, and his life is actually seen through the framing or prism of his rear window. Well, our main character in this movie, it's kind of, sort of, he's not really confined by any type of a physical injury. Uh, it's more uh, a mental. I, I think they call that agoraphobic, when you're afraid to leave your apartment. And, and that's the way this lead character is. So uh, in that sense, he is confined in his little world or whatever there is to it. But, you know, uh, <laughs> the director shoots himself in the foot because interspersed between the scenes of what's going on, we see our lead character dressed like Trayvon Martin going out and scoping the hood. All right? So, you know, all through the movie, from the opening reels, you kind of get the impression that, well, this guy might be afraid to leave his apartment, but he seems to be leaving it on a regular basis, all right? So there's your first flaw and kick in the, in the teeth there. We have thrown into this thing an Oedipus Rex complex, uh, very Freudian for, you know, those of you that like uh, comic book psychology, uh, we have some illicit drugs and drug use thrown into it, uh, and the hazards of the internet. And they're all thrown in to kind of augment this tale. Now, our our lead character, who is Henry, not only is afraid to leave his apartment, but he likes interacting with people. So he is adept at uh, hacking into uh, people's uh, cameras on their on their laptops. So he has a collection of about a half a dozen girls who he spies on on a regular basis, and he sees himself as, uh, oh, I guess, their guardian, you know, so that he, uh, you know, talks to himself about their lives and what they should do with their lives and uh, comments on their mistakes and on their good things as well. So let me give you some of the uh, background uh, people in this. Our main character, Henry, is played by Dakota Shapiro. Uh, his friend, Eric, is played by Luke Cook. You know, I'm not so sure that Eric is his friend, although he, he kind of tries to convince Henry he's his friend because he can't pay the rent. He's a struggling artist 
actor who can't seem to find a job. Uh, and he's trying to pick up, I guess, a lot of viewers on YouTube to boast his, uh, boy, uh, bolster his recognition. But hey, 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 ain't working. You know, Laura is in this. She's one of the ladies, uh, the girlfriends of Henry, if you will. She's played by Valda Vareco. She has a, a big part. And the other one who uh, of the six who has another big part is Tessa. And she is played by Ashley Rogers. They all do a, a fine job. There's no problem with the with the acting in this, although Luke Cook sometimes gets a bit um, smarmy. You know, I mean, you, you sit there and you wonder why Henry can't see what the hell's going on with this character, right? As I said, Ramin Niami is the, not only the director, but he is the writer as well. The editor is Mike Small. He's kept this nice and condensed. It's worthwhile. And the uh, director of photography is Tara Violet Niami. Yeah, that would be the director's daughter. She actually doesn't do a bad job at all. She seems rather uh, comfortable behind uh, the camera. And she does put in some, some rather interesting shots, especially when you know, the, the computer, the laptop is involved. Uh, it all comes around that it looks it looks pretty good. So, how does this play in with, uh, the, you know, the big hype on the on the circuit as this is being produced? Is it's, it's a modern twist on rear window. Well, you know, if, if you want to be honest, there are even times in watching the classic rear window that the movie uh, does slow down a bit. But it never slows as much as this movie does. There are many scenes in which it is just too protracted. All right? And there are little flashes and little glimpses as the story unfolds that do more than foreshadow the climax. They basically tell you how this movie is going to end. And so... If you're used to watching movies and you're attuned uh, to watching movies, you're going to be about a third of the way into this, and you're already going to have the ending. So it's 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 that much of a, a giveaway. Several scenes in this movie are a little bit forced. Uh, for example, the uh, the police raid into the apartment and the the Eric and Laura seduction scene. Uh, you could tell that they, Ramin was trying to make parallels between scenes that were in Rear Window and, and jam them into this movie, and they really don't fit. The police scene in the apartment is, is probably the most, I mean, you're sitting there going, they're going, that's not realistic, that would never happen. And people, you know, it, it, it's that out of the ordinary. All told, I, without a face, is not bad for a view. But folks, don't believe the hype on this one. It is definitely not rear window. I'm going to give this one a C. And now that you have learned what you have learned, your end of your lesson.